everyone, and welcome to my review of Ponyo. Now, before I begin my review, I want to say two things. First, I am aware this movie was inspired by The Little Mermaid. However, this is my opinion on the film on its own merits and not on how closely it follows the source material. The second thing I want to bring up is I know some of you may ask if I've seen Doug Walker, also known as Nostalgia Critic's review of Ponyo, which I have seen, and to be honest, of the Nostalgia Critic reviews he uploaded for 2012 that I've seen, I thought it was one of his best considering a lot of the other reviews he made from that year that I saw felt a bit stale and or lackluster to me. Now, with all that said, let's talk about the film, shall we? So the plot follows a goldfish named Brimhilda who sneaks out of her home while her father, who is a wizard by the name of Fujimoto, isn't looking, and while being stuck in a jar, she meets a young boy by the name of Sosuke, who decides to name her Ponyo after a cut he had while trying to rescue her was gone because Ponyo licked it. After Ponyo talks, Fujimoto takes Ponyo back where she declares her name to be Ponyo, not Brimhilda, and tries to transform her into a human with Fujimoto barely being able to hold her off. While Fujimoto tries to contact Ponyo's mother, Grandma Mare, Ponyo transforms into a human and breaks out of her home trying to reunite with Sosuke by running on her sisters who have turned into these water fish things. But in the process, she upsets the balance of nature to where the entire world is flooding. Now we're here to question, will Fujimoto be able to talk to Grandma Mare? Will Ponyo and Sosuke reunite? And how will the balance of nature be restored? That's all the plot I mentioned, so now it's time for me to say what I liked about Ponyo, what I did not like about Ponyo, some trivia my overall opinion on the film. Okay, so what did I like about Ponyo? The animation is incredible. The movement between the human characters and the creatures in the ocean move extremely fluently. A scene that stands out to me as being especially memorable is the scene where Ponyo's running on the fish wave things in order to reunite with Sosuke. The voice acting in both the English and Japanese versions are overall very good. With the English dubbing, I think Noah Sarah's, while I do have a minor complaint I'll bring up with her performance later in the cast, I think it was overall okay as far as child actors goes. I felt she read her lines alright. Frankie Jones, I felt he was actually pretty good. To me, I felt he read his lines well, and when a scene was silent, he was silent, and he didn't just shout out his lines. Now, with Liam Neeson as Fujimoto, I could see why some people might find him a bit bland, but personally, I thought he absolutely nailed the overprotective father side of Fujimoto's personality. Tina Fey also felt was great and really delivering the caring motherly side to Lisa's personality. Now, there are other people to bring up in the English dub, like Matt Damon as Sosuke's father Koichi, Kate Blanchett as Grandma Mare, Cloris Leachman as Keo, Betty White as Yoshi, and even Lily Tomlin as Toki. But really, aside from saying they all gave overall solid performances, I really don't have a lot else to say about the English dubbing. As for the Japanese version, I think it was also very good. As far as child actors goes, I think Yuri Anara and Hiroki Doi were great as Ponyo Sosuke because I felt they read their lines really well, and when the scene was quiet, they were silent for the most part. They didn't just yell at their lines. George Okoro I thought was excellent as Ponyo's father Fujimoto. While Liam Neeson nailed the overprotective side of Fujimoto's personality, I felt George Okoro not only delivered that, but I felt the character's hatred of humans polluting the ocean to be genuine as well. There are other people to bring up, such as Kazushige Nagashima as Sosuke's father Koichi, Tomoko Yamaguchi as Sosuke's mother Lisa, Yuki Ami as Ponyo's mother Grandma Mare, Kazuko Yoshiyuki as Toki, Tomoko Naroka as Yoshi, and Toki Dari as Keo, but really, aside from saying they're all great, I really don't have a lot else to say that wouldn't be a repeat of what I can or have already said about the English dubbing. The music by Joey Zashi, I have to say, is excellent. They fit the scenes they were in perfectly, and I have to admit, the orchestras they used sounded great, and I liked how they did some references to some classical music, like Richard Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries. And even the end song, Ponyo on the Cliff by the Sea, is not only cute, but I felt it was also pretty catchy and well sung for both versions. As for the pop rendition of the English version, I'll bring that up later on the cons. Lastly, the script directed by Hayao Miyazaki is overall pretty good. A big reason why I would say it's well done is because the relationship between Sosuke and Ponyo really works, and it might be the film's strongest area. Plus, I feel the characters, while there is one thing with Lisa I'll bring up later in the cons, like every Hayao Miyazaki film, are all memorable with distinct personalities. Now, while there is a minor complaint I'll bring up with the End of the World subplot they had, I get the idea of what they were going for, which is there were consequences to Ponyo's actions when she was trying to reunite with Sosuke. Now, while there are a lot of good elements to Ponyo, what were some of the things I did not like about Ponyo? While I do have four complaints, nonetheless, I didn't find them to be that big of a deal, and that they didn't hurt my overall enjoyment of the film, and I found them to be pretty minor issues. My first complaint is, well, I got the idea of what they were trying to do with the End of the World subplot, which was there were consequences for Ponyo's actions, 
and it was resolved relatively harmlessly, I will admit I felt it wasn't all that well thought out. One example I thought was weird was despite the fact the entire place was flooded, a lot of the townspeople treated it as a minor inconvenience, like the power's out will come back on in a couple of hours. The second good place, while I did find Lisa to be very likable and memorable, even I'll admit there are times that the decision she makes gets really distracting. A good example is when Ponyo made a typhoon to try to reunite with Sosuke. She was going to cross the bridge to go back home with Sosuke, despite the fact that there was a tidal wave on its way, and the Coast Guard told her to not only not cross the bridge, but also to take the mountain road or go back to the senior center, since they stated that they're safe there, but she crossed it anyways. My third complaint while I did like both versions of the song Ponyo on the Cliff by the Sea, I will admit I wasn't a huge fan of the pop version. One reason why I wasn't a big fan of it is because, and I know a lot of American pop songs tend to do this nowadays, but I felt them using autotune just didn't work here, because I felt Noah Cyrus and Frankie Jonas did a decent job with the original song, and using autotune I felt not only made the pop rendition sound a little ugly, but I also felt it was unnecessary. My last complaint while I thought Noah Cyrus was overall alright as Ponyo, like if he chased and spirited away, it felt like there were times where she was just yelling her lines. But here, it felt like she was doing it way too often, even when the scene didn't warrant it, and it came off as a bit obnoxious and or annoying. But really, these complaints didn't hurt my enjoyment of the film whatsoever, and felt like more like minor complaints to me. Now for some trivia. As some of you should know by now, Ponyo was inspired by The Little Mermaid, but which version tends to vary as some will say he was inspired by the Hans Christian Andersen 1837 novel, The Little Mermaid, and other sources from what I gather claimed he was inspired by the 1989 Disney film of the same name. The design of Sosuke was actually based off Hayao Miyazaki's son Goro Miyazaki, who you might recognize as the director of Tales from Earthsea and from Up on Poppy Hill when he was five years old, and apparently, Fujimo was the depiction of the animation director Katsuya Kondo. The seaside village where Ponyo takes place is modeled after the town of Tomonura in the Seto Naikai National Park where Hayao Miyazaki stayed in 2005. The sheer level of detail in the animation required 170,000 separate images, which is the most by any Hayao Miyazaki film. Heck, the opening 12 seconds where you see the vast school of fish and other undersea creatures required over 1,600 conceptual sketches to develop. The name Ponyo comes from Hayao Miyazaki's idea of the sound of something soft and squishy would make. The screenwriter for the English version of Ponyo is Melissa Matheson, who is also the screenwriter for the Academy Award winning film E.T. the Extraterrestrial, and apparently she wrote the script in just four days. Some of the other roles the cast in the English version were in includes Noah Cyrus, who is not only the younger sister of Miley Cyrus, but from what I gather she also appeared in Doc and some minor appearances in Hannah Montana, Frankie Jonas, who is not only the younger brother of the Jonas Brothers, but he has also played Trevor Kendall in the Disney Channel original movie Camp Rock 2, The Final Jam, and he has also appeared in the Disney Channel original series Jonas L.A. Tina Fey, who won both a Primetime Emmy and a Golden Globe Award as Elizabeth or Liz Lemon from 30 Rock, Miss Sharon Norbury from Mean Girls, and she's even known for impersonating former Alaska Governor Vice Presidential nominee Sarah Palin from Saturday Night Live, where she won a Primetime Emmy for her performance. Liam Neeson, who you might know as Oscar Schindler from the Academy Award winning and, might I add, incredibly depressing film Schindler's List, where he was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actor in a Leading Role, Ra's al Ghul or al Ghul from the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy, Brian Mills from Taken and its sequel Taken 2, John Veljohn from the 1998 film adaptation of Les Miserables, Huffer Kinsey from the 2004 film Kinsey, where he was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Drama. And yes, he was not only Zeus from the 2010 remake of Clash of the Titans and his sequel Wrath of the Titans, but also Qui-Gon Jinn from Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Kate Blanchett you might recognize as Gladriel from the Academy Award winning films The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, The Return of the King, and the Academy Award nominated prequel The Hobbit An Unexpected Journey, Queen Elizabeth I from the Academy Award winning film Elizabeth, where she was nominated for Best Actor and she would reprise her role, in Elizabeth the Golden Age, where once again she was nominated for Best Actress at the Oscars, Catherine Hepburn from Martin Scorsese's Academy Award winning film The Aviator, where she won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress, Jude Quinn from I'm Not There, where she was nominated for Best Supporting Actress, in the same year she was nominated for Elizabeth the Golden Age, Bathsheba or just simply Sheba Hart from Notes and a Scandal, where she was again nominated for Best Supporting Actress at the Oscars, and yet she was even not only Irina Spalka from Indiana Jones and the King of the Crystal Skulls, but she was also Lady Marion from Ridley Scott's 2010 version of Robin Hood. Matt Damon, who also played Will Hunting in the Academy Award winning film Good Will Hunting, where he nominally won an Oscar for Best Original Screenplay along with Ben Affleck, but he was also nominated for Best Actor for his performance as well. Jason Bourne from The Bourne Identity. 
The Bourne Supremacy, and the Academy Award winning film The Bourne Ultimatum. Colin Sullivan from the Academy Award winning film The Departed, which is not only a remake of a Chinese film called Infernal Affairs, but is also currently the only film Martin Scorsese won the Oscar for Best Director. Loki from Kevin Smith's Dogma. Francois Pinard from the Academy Award nominated film Invictus, where he was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Lyndon Caldwell from Steven Soderbergh's Ocean's Remake Trilogy. And he was the beat from the Coen Brothers Academy Award nominated film remake of True Grit. Betty White, who you might know as soon at Knives from the Mary Tyler Moore Show, where she actually won a primetime Emmy. Rose Newland from the Golden Girls, where she again won a primetime Emmy. And she has made guest appearances in numerous shows such as The Simpsons, Family Guy, Malcolm in the Middle, 30 Rock, and the list just goes on. Cloris Leacherman, you might recognize as Ruth Popper from The Last Picture Show, where she was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. For our blue group from Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein, where she was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actress Musical or Comedy. Evelyn Wright from Spanglish. This wasn't the only Hayao Miyazaki film she starred in, and she was also Dola in Castle in the Sky. And yes, she was even Gnorga from Don Bluth's A Troll in Central Park. Lastly, as far as the English W goes, we have Lily Tomlin, who you might know as Miss Frizzle from The Magic School Bus, where she won a primetime Emmy. Linnea Reese from Nashville, where she was nominated for both an Academy Award and a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress. And she also played Deborah Fittier from Aaron Sorkin's The West Wing. As for the Japanese version, with what little I could find, some of the roles, films, and or other professions said cast did or in includes Tomoko Yamaguchi, who also played Hayama Minami from the romantic drama series Long Vacation, which coincidentally she starred with Takuya Kimura, who played Howl in Howl's Boomy Castle, Kazushige Nagashima, who was a baseball player from 1989 to 1996 and played on the Akut Swallows and the Yomiuri Giants, and since his retirement, he's been a sports commentator, Yuki Ami, who also starred in Kuro no Tenchi Volume 2, and she also played Sakura Uhara from Southbound. George Okoro, who is a comedian, songwriter, as well as a singer, from what I gather, he's done the Japanese voice for many big-time American movies, such as Homer Simpson from The Simpsons Movie, and Buzz Lightyear from the Toy Story Trilogy. Akiko Yano, who is a Japanese pop and jazz musician or singer, who from what I gather, about three of her discography were in the top ten charts as far as Japan sales goes. Kazuko Yoshiyuki, who played Anne Frank in a stage adaptation of The Diary of a Young Girl, more famously known as The Diary of Anne Frank, and second from Empire of Passion, where she won Japan's version of the Oscars for Best Actress. Lastly, you have Rumi Hiragi, who also played Chihiro from Spirited Away, which is currently not only the only 2D animated film to win the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, but it's also currently the only film made outside of an English-speaking country to win that award, and she was even Sachiko Hirokoji from Goro Miyazaki's second film, From Up on Poppy Hill. Overall, Ponyo's nowhere close to Hayao Miyazaki's best film. Heck, it's not even my top five, and I think it's one of his weaker films. Having said that, though, it's still a good movie in its own right. The animation's unbelievable. The relationship between Sosuke and Ponyo's adorable. The characters are memorable. The voice acting of both versions are well done. And the overall story was, for the most part, well done. I think the best compliment I could give it is it's a perfect movie to show to toddlers, and I mean that in the best way possible. Plus, this was the first Hayao Miyazaki film I saw back when it was in theaters, and while the small gripes I did have do add up, Ponyo is still a really cute film by Hayao Miyazaki. I give Ponyo 3 stars out of 4 and an 8 out of 10. Accordingly, that is my review of Ponyo. If you want to express your own opinion, you are more than welcome to, but please be mature about it. Any bashing and or personal attacks on anyone will be removed the minute I see them and you will be blocked, which is the last thing I want to do to anyone. Thus, that concludes not just my review of Ponyo, but also my reviews of Hayao Miyazaki's films. I hope you all enjoyed them as much as I enjoyed making them, and with that, I hope you all have a very nice day, and I'll see you all next time.